just keep playing it. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Stay with me, Jennifer, right there where you're playing. Praise God. The Bible says that he didn't want to make her a public example. I'm just going to bring a few revelations. And listen, this is a revised version because I don't have a lot of, long time to be with you today. But I believe that just a few, few points from the Word of God is about to change somebody. I believe a few points from the Word of God is about to do, do a miracle in some people's lives here this morning. You know, God don't need but a moment. God don't need an hour. He don't need two hours. He, he don't need three days. He needs a moment. A moment can change everything. And the Bible says that the Bible says he didn't want to make her a public example. And I just want you to know this morning, the first thing I want you to grab from this story and put in your pocket, put in your life today, I want you to understand this, is that the plan of God for your life is going to cost you something in the beginning, but it's going to pay you a lot more in the end. It's going to reward you a lot more in the end. And it cost Mary something to give birth to Jesus. It cost Mary something. Matter of fact, it was about to cost her her future husband. What you don't understand is it says, it says that while he thought about these things, and sometimes you want to think that that was just an overnight thing, but, you, but theologians believe that there was actually several months in which Joseph had told Mary, no, 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 this ain't for me right here. But through a process of time, them angels kept ministering to him. And through that process of time, he realized, no, that which is in her, is of God and so I need to go back to her but Mary this is where I'm getting at Mary said it don't matter what it costs me it don't matter what it costs me it don't matter who leaves me it don't matter if I'm all by myself I'm willing to obey the Lord and give birth to what God has put inside of me what I'm trying to tell you this morning is that which has been conceived from the Holy Ghost is going to cost you something in the beginning. But Mary, don't worry about it because not only is it going to give something to the world in the end, it's going to give you eternity. It will reward you in the end. What is it that God has asked of you? What is it that you feel is too high of, of a price right now? I come to tell you that no matter what you pay right now, no matter what it costs you right now, it, the reward in the end will always outweigh what it costs you right now. Some of you right now are looking at some things saying, my God, that's a lot. God's asking for a lot. But I came to tell you, then no matter, listen, if he's asking for a lot now, that's just a seed for a big harvest. Mary, you might, you might give up something right now, but it's going to give you eternity in the end. Whatever you give in the beginning, God is going to reward in the end. Second thing I want you to grab today, I want you to grab this right here. We've seen this in, in, in chapter Matthew 2 and verse 13. It says that, that they, that Herod was seeking the child to destroy him. I want you to understand something. Hell desires and seeks to kill that which has been birthed in, through, and by the Spirit. So what are, you, what are you saying here today, Pastor? What I'm trying to tell you is that Jesus came in the flesh, but he was conceived through the Holy Ghost. You'll always know which, that which is precious in the eyes of God because hell wants to kill it. What is the place in your life that hell's after? What is, is it your marriage? Is it your children? Is it your finances? Is it your call? What is it that hell's after right now? What is it that you're trying your best? You're trying your best to defend. And if hell's attacking it, it's precious in the sight of God. It's precious in the sight of God. So that's the reason you can't quit fighting for it. And that's the reason you can't give up on it. And that's the reason you can't say, my God, I've been praying for three years and ain't nothing happened now. I must not going to happen. No, 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 no. If hell's attacking it, it's precious in the sight of God. 
Say, hell wanted to seek to destroy the young child. But now I'm going to pull you over to Luke 2. I want you to go over there real quick. If you've done close your Bible, Luke chapter 2, watch this. And 7 through 19. Oh, and this is where I wanted to get this today. The Holy Spirit, I felt this real strong in my spirit. The plan of God. Listen, the plan of God. You've got to understand that these angels came to the wise men and the shepherds. Well, what does that matter? Well, so what? They came to the wise men and the shepherds. Watch this. These are two different people, two classes of people. The wise men are the uppity ups. They have the money. They're known by the prestigious people in the community. The shepherds are the lowest of the lows. They're the humble people. See, we think of a shepherd because we think of when Jesus was a shepherd and David was a shepherd, so the shepherds must be here. But you've got to realize this is a whole different class of people. The shepherds were lowly. They were humble people and generally known as thieves, outcasts, people that the other folk didn't want in the church. And so what, 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 is the, what are you saying today? I want you to understand that the plan of God and salvation through Jesus is for all. It's for the wise man and it's for the shepherd. It's for the poor man and it's for the rich man. It's for the white man and it's for the black man. It's for the American and the Middle, Middle Eastern man. Amen. It's for everybody. What are you saying, Pastor? I believe that. But really, do you believe that? Because I promise you, until you're put in a tight place... You won't know what you really believe. There's stuff in each one of us that now we don't even know is there until we're put in that place. There's racism there that we don't even know that's there until we're put in that place. Uh, there's, there's all kind of prejudice stuff that's in us that we don't even know that's there until we're put in that place. But God said, I want you to understand something. I didn't just come to announce the birth of my son, the plan of salvation for the rich man. I didn't just come to uh, announce it to the poor man. And I didn't just come to announce it to the American. I came to announce it to the whole world that whoever puts their faith in Jesus Christ shall be saved. Watch this. This is where I want to get you right here. This is where I want you to get, I want to get you. Think about this. This is a monumental, historic, eternal event. Never before and never again has the Father sent His Son in flesh to the earth now watch this so we could understand him calling the wise men they can bring gold they can bring gifts they know the king but God said no 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 I'm going to announce it to the outcast that I am requesting your presence at the birth of my son I am requesting that you come and attend the celebration of me giving my son. Look at the Father's heart right here. This is a wide open picture to the heart of God. That I didn't just send angels to talk to them, to wise men. I didn't just send the angels to talk to the people who had it all together. I sent angels to talk to the people didn't have nothing together and I'm requesting your attendance your presence at the birth of my son at the monumental moment in history that God thought about the ones who were not who nobody else was thinking about Now, for some of us, that gives us a lot of hope because we don't have it all together. For some of us, that gives us a lot of hope this morning in this place because you've been looking at so-and-so and you looked at so-and-so and you're like, man, they got it together. But I don't even know why I'm sitting here right now. You know why you're sitting here? Because God requested your presence here this morning. He requested your presence. <laughs> hey, he sent a shout in the spirit realm and said you might be in that crack house, but I'm requesting your presence in my house this morning. I want you. I want you.
want you. I want you in my house. Wow. That's what it's all about this morning. That's where, that's why we're here today. God said, I'm requesting your presence. At the birth of your son, Father? Yeah. At the birth of my son. But don't you know I'm a thief? You was a thief. Don't you know? Don't you know that I'm this? You was that. But you can't come into the presence of my son and not be transformed. (laughs) And that's what all this is about this morning. And so it wouldn't be much of a Christmas. Listen, there you go. It's closed. I could preach this for hours. But it wouldn't be much of a Christmas. And I wouldn't be much of a man of God. And this wouldn't be much of a house of worship. If I didn't give somebody, a shepherd, if I didn't give a wise man an opportunity to come to the manger. And I'm not no angel. (laughs) But I am somebody that's heralding the good news this morning. That no matter where you've been and no matter what you've done, Jesus Christ and the blood that was shed on the cross can wash your sin away and make you a new person. That's what I'm here saying today. That's what I'm here announcing today. That you can come to the manger. And you can meet the babe and the Savior. All at the same time. Praise God. And I just feel like there's some people this morning that this is ministering to. So I'm going to give you that opportunity this morning. I want you to bow your heads with me. We're we're about to get out of here today. Man, I, I would love, Miss Jennifer, to be able to tell people, I got right with God on Christmas. Now, I, I'm thankful for the day I got right with God. I ain't going to, you know, I ain't undermining that, but I'm just saying. I'd like to be able to tell folk it was Christmas Day. And I don't even know why I was there that morning. But I showed up and this pastor gave the shortest sermon I've ever heard him say, <laughs> preach. <laughs> no, <laughs> But something grabbed me. And I knew I had to be down there. Something grabbed me and I knew I had to be down there. So will your heads bow this morning? Pastor, would you please pray for me? I need to commit or recommit my life to Jesus Christ today. I'm that, I'm that shepherd or I'm that wise man. I got a lot of money. I'm a businessman or whatever you are. But you know what? In my heart right now, I'm away from God. Or I'm that shepherd. I'm that shepherd. People turn their nose up at me. I've done done a lot of wrong, done done this and that. But I'm that shepherd. And there's a call coming out to me right now. I've come to meet the babe and the Savior. That's me. If that's you today, when I say three, I want you to lift your hand. And I don't want you to be ashamed. Of, listen, you're not here by accident. You're not cause just because somebody invited you. You're here because God requested your presence here today. Look at the Father's heart. Saying, I want you in my house on this day. So if that's you, I need to commit or recommit my life to Christ. When I say three, lift your hands. Don't be ashamed. Are you ready? One, two, three. Lift your hands right now. Lift your hands. Just lift them up right now. I've seen hands go up, but they went back down. Lift them up high. Lift them up high. If you're ashamed of them in here, you won't walk for them out there, so there ain't no need in you even lifting your hand if you had to put it back down. I'm just being honest. I'm not mean-spirited. I'm being honest with you. I see your hand, sir. I see your hand over here, young man. I see your hand, ma'am. Anybody else in this place right now? I need, Pastor, I need... I want to be in on this prayer today. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Right now, you can put your hands down. 
Now, right now, this is where the rubber hits the road, right? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, right now, every one of you that just lifted your hands, every one of you that didn't and needed to, I want you to come down here. I want you to stand with me. Matter of fact, I want you to stand with me up here. I want you to stand with me.